the meetings and conferences through the years, I've been a little bit arrogant, I think, in identifying myself as a villager based on the life that Mary and I have shared, living in villages, not only in India, but in Africa and other places. I learned in the process of this uh, experience through these wonderful opportunities to work with the wonderful people of the villages of the world is the reality that one must be very careful about taking credit for things that happen. And um, let me t make two comments on that. First of all, let me just say to my students who are here, that the greatest privilege for a professor is to see the students do better than the professor. And that is the way I feel about so many of you, to see the way that you are contributing and around the world, the way that the contributions are being made is the greatest satisfaction of all to me. The, the second um, comment about taking credit is, um, and this will not surprise my students, because every year they used to ask me for the woodpecker story. And um, let me just go through that at this point. A woodpecker who decided to become a foreign consultant. <laughs> <clears throat> and so he left his home forest, and he flew, and he flew all day, and the clouds were gathering, and so, as evening was coming on, he decided it was time to find supper, and he settled into the tallest tree in the new forest. And he looked around in the bark, and he found a good place to start. He made his first tentative tap into the tree, and just at that moment, a tremendous bolt of lightning came out of the clouds that had gathered overhead, hit that tree, the poor woodpecker was knocked to the ground. He was lying there. He looked up and saw the tree was split from top to bottom. He shook his head and said, boy, a guy doesn't realize what he can do until he gets away from home. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way so many of us are. We think that our little taps are what produces the change. And of course, that's not it at all. The whole the secret of success in international health is to learn to time your tap at the right time when the first lightning is about to come. And that happens. And unfortunately, there is a tendency of foreign consultants to take the credit for things that are really happening because of the tremendous energy that those of us who have had the privilege with of working with changing societies around the world can experience ourselves and learn from. And these bolts of energy that come through societies during the tremendous periods of change that we're living through at the present time are the things that will produce these magnificent changes that we see happening that are such a, an inspiration my, my parents that you saw worked in India for 52 years, retired three times, and were called back to their area in the Turai of the Himalayas. And I frequently, in talking to my dad after I started to work in villages, he and I agreed that there was a great difference between the time when he was working in the villages and then when I had the privilege of starting to work in the villages. And I think of my dad and my mother sort of hammering on the mud walls of the villages trying to start change during the colonial period. And then the privilege that I had of going to work in the same period after independence, when there was this tremendous bolt of energy that went through the whole social fabric of India and produced changes that were just phenomenal. And those of us who were technical 
and professional trying to help in that process, found that it was all that we could do to run to keep up with the changes that were underway. And that this phenomenal process of movement that had been produced in the villages by the release of energy that came with independence was something that all we could do was to nudge the direction of that change a little bit in order to help in determining the directions in which it would go. But the real power of that change was underway and we were privileged to ride the wave like a surfboard rider proceeding into the new developments that um, none of us knew where they were going, but it's always been exciting. One of the things I remember most was that Nevin and others of us would come up with some bright idea that we thought either we had heard it or we thought we had thought it up. And John Gordon invariably came out with the phrase, well, who told him? Because he was a great person for trying to trace the linkages between the way ideas had come to various people. And the interactions of the exchanges that we've been privileged to have as a scientific community has been um, one of the great excitements of our lives. He was my professional guru, guru. He taught me about the population laboratory when I was going to Louisiana to start the program at the <coughs> Medical College. He told me about John Grant and his work at Ding Xian with C.C. Chen and the notion of using a rural teaching laboratory really came through that heritage from John Grant to John Gordon and then to me.